friends welcome or welcome back to pretty planet for those of you that are new my name is tara and for those of you that are returning you guys know me thank you so much for being here we are going to get started you guys in our prayer bible um, so today we are going to focus on scriptures regarding the attributes of god i have them all written out here you guys i have my scriptures tabbed in the bible already i have my colored pencil my pen and this is the washi tape that i'm going to be using today it is a little bit of red glitter and foil and it has that design on it so I thought that would be nice to add to everything else that we've already used I pray that you guys are doing well I'm doing good no complaints I'm just glad to be in this prayer Bible again you guys I have been referring to this quite a bit I have been using it um, and it is truly blessed me to have this to have scripture already tabbed and highlighted in here where I can go and read them and know what to pray when I'm going through some specific things um, so far you guys we have covered scriptures on fear I've covered healing self-control trusting God finances identity in God thoughts and today we're gonna do the attributes of God and I've already tabbed our first scripture again I pray that you guys are doing well um, I don't want to make this a really long video typically I stick with 10 scriptures you guys but as I was reading these scriptures and writing them down I could not stop at 10 I think I have 14 so and that's okay you guys will find that that'll happen sometimes too if you guys are participating in creating yourselves a prayer Bible um, and I do plan on going back to add more scriptures to each of those sections that we talked about but our first scripture today is coming from Hebrews 6 and 18 and that reads so God has given both his promise and his oath these two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie Amen. You guys, it's so, so important that we know the God that we serve. It's so important to learn about his attributes. He cannot lie. When I highlighted this, I thought to myself, I can just stop right there. It's impossible. It says here, it is impossible for God to lie. That means everything, everything, you guys, that he has said to us thus far, that he continues to speak to us, that he continues to reiterate in his word, in his scripture, it, he can't lie. It is absolutely the truth. And you guys, you're here with me. You're going over the scriptures. We're in the Holy Bible. We believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We believe this word. So I did. I said to myself, you guys, I can stop right there because he can't lie. Everything that he said is already true it's facts it's true it's the truth it's it's no it's no fabricating the truth there is nothing nothing that god will lie about he can't it's impossible impossible okay i can go on and on you guys know that i can but we'll move on so i did you guys i said i can stop right there <laughs> But I didn't, so I kept going. The next scripture is Psalms 24 and 8. And let's see if I can find it here in our tabs. Okay. Psalms 24 and 8 reads, where is it? Okay. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord invincible in battle. Amen. Who is the king of glory? It is him, the Lord strong and mighty. You guys, I love, love, love the scriptures that highlight the attributes of God. I knew I had to do this because as I'm reading over the things pertaining to fear and um, healing and all the things that I've highlighted so far, what would make a person believe it? 
We have to learn about God's character. We have to know what it is that we're reading in order to believe it and trust it, right? We have to know that it's impossible for him to lie. We have to know that he is the king of glory. He is strong and mighty. He is invincible in battle. We have to know these things in order to get us through what it is that we're going through. Because if we don't know it, then we can't believe it and we won't trust what we don't believe, right? So I'll keep going. <laughs> And the next one is Psalms 105. There's quite a few in Psalms um, for the attributes of God. Did I even move that scripture? I didn't. Okay, what was that? 24 and 8. Okay. And Psalms 105 says, For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. Amen. For the Lord is good. Everything about the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. It doesn't stop. He never stops loving us, you guys. His unfailing love. I think, um, I think you guys can relate that we sometimes put all of our trust and all of our hope in humans, in, in our um, natural human relationships that we have with people. And sometimes it just doesn't work out, right? Sometimes people are in our lives for a season. Sometimes they're in our lives for a reason. But we know that God's love for us is unfailing. It continues forever. He will never ever fail at loving us. He, he can't. He just can't. And he is good. For the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time preaching on all of these scriptures, you guys, but I promise it hit a spot for me. It really did. Um, the next scripture is Psalms 107, 1 through 2. And that reads, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. Amen. And that is um, kind of on the same lines as the previous scripture that we just read. But the Bible, the word itself, it continues to reiterate that the Lord is good. The Lord is good and his faithful love endures forever. Amen. And if he has done anything for you, it is our job. It is our responsibility as Christians, as believers to spread the gospel. It is to be the light for those that may not know God and let them see us and then want to know who is this God that we serve, right? Because he is good. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for being good to us. For being the good God that you are. Thank you. Tell others he has redeemed you. Absolutely. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. You know what, you guys? I am just so excited about these scriptures. You notice I haven't tabbed anything, so I need to go back. Let me just tab this one while I'm here. I'm so excited. Okay, Tara, we're, you're not going to talk and just get this all mixed up today. I forget to tab all the time. Every time I'm doing this, I get so excited and I forget to tab these scriptures, but I'm going to try to stay on point. <laughs> you guys work with me. I'm going to try to stay on point. Okay. So we just tab Psalms 107. Let's go back to Psalms 105 because I don't, I have a lot here and I don't want to end up doubling back. Right. Um, so we'll put that there. You guys should have stopped me. 
How's it going, you guys? If those of you that have started your prayer Bibles, are you um, are you enjoying like at least highlighting the scriptures? Maybe you haven't gotten to the point where you're referring to it. You know, if you're going through things or you're still picking out scriptures, but how's it going for you guys? I hope these videos are helpful. I have heard from a few of you and you do find it helpful and I'm thankful to God for that. Let's go to Psalms 24 and 8. I can't believe I missed all of this, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I can believe it. I do it all the time. I get too excited talking about scripture especially the attributes of God, OMG. He is exactly who he says he is. Exactly who he says he is and why, because it's impossible for him to lie. He can't tell us one thing and then don't deliver or not come through. He can't say that he's redeeming us and then don't redeem us. He can't say that I'll deliver you and, and don't deliver you or I'll heal you and don't heal us. You know, whatever that looks like, our how we see things is different than how God sees us or how God sees things for us. But he'll never fail us, so we know that. Um, Hebrew, I did those. Okay, now we can go to Psalms 145 and 8. I'm sorry, you guys. I think I'm all over the place, but I'm going to get it together. Okay, Psalms 145, 8 through 10. I get too excited. Psalms 145, 8 through 10 reads, The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. All of your works will thank you, Lord, and your faithful followers will praise you. Amen. Lord, let us be faithful followers. Let us be faithful followers. Amen. Slow to get angry. And it keeps reiterating that he has unfailing love for us. And I thank God for that. Okay, and 10. All of your works will thank you, Lord. Yes. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. That's not this scripture, but that just reminded me of that when it says all of your works will thank you. Yes. Okay. Now let's tab it before I move on. And that was 8 through 10. Okay. And we only need one tab here because there's another scripture that's going to um, be on this same page. So we can use the one tab for both. I'm not doing so well with this washi tape today. It's like crinkling. Oh, man. I don't like that. Let's fix it. This again, you guys, if you saw my last um, prayer Bible setup, this is the washi tape that I got from Amazon. It's not the best quality, but I'm hoping I can get through it, you know, and make it work. Um, I do like the different patterns, so I'm just going to make it work. The next scripture is Psalms 145 and 17. Let's cross that one off. 145 and 17 reads, The Lord is righteous in everything he does. He is filled with kindness. Amen. And I think for this one, you guys, I'm going to go through 18. Because as I was just reading it, I, I sometimes read before and after. Um, I don't know why I didn't notice that before, but I'll read 18 too. It says, the Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. Amen. Amen. That's comforting just to know that we can call on the Lord. And he's close. He al he's always there, you guys. He's always here. 
Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So we're going to have one left and I should probably, I'll just remember we'll have one left because we use one tab for both, both scriptures. Okay. The next one is Exodus 15 and 11. Might as well just stop flipping. Okay. Exodus 15 and 11 reads, Who is like you among the gods, O Lord, glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders? Amen. Who is like you? There is none like you. There is none like you. Glorious in holiness. Mm, mm, mm awesome and splendor. Just the words, the descriptive words that we have to use when we're talking about our God. Glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor. You guys, just these words alone don't do it. It doesn't do God any justice in just how awesome he really is. These worldly earthly words that we use but i mean we come up with the most the most precious most meaningful words there are to describe just how awesome he is amen Did i make that one too big no that's fine okay we'll move on to jeremiah 32 and 17. i think i see it tabbed here somewhere Let's see. Jeremiah 32 and 17 reads, O sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and earth by your strong hand and powerful arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Amen. I'll just start over here. Nothing is too hard for our God because he made the heavens and the earth. Amen. Things may get hard for us, but that's when we lean on his strength because we know in scripture it says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And so, thank you, Lord. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing at all. And we're going to tab that. Okay, get it right, Tara. All right. And Acts 10 and 34 is our next scripture. Let's see. Acts 10 and 34. Acts 10 and 34 reads, Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. Amen. Amen. God is no respecter of a person. So what he does for me, he'll do for you. What he did for you, he'll do for me. He's no respecter of a person. Amen. And he shows no favoritism. That is a human characteristic to show favoritism. We do that. You know, God does not. He doesn't discriminate or show favoritism. We're all his children and he loves us all the same. Somehow I got my blue tabs. Un they're not lined up properly, but it's okay. Okay. Crinkled that one, but it's all right. Okay, the next scripture is 1 Samuel 2 and 2. Let's see. I'm loving this, you guys. I truly am. I am. I'm telling you, I've been taking this with me, and I've been using it, and it's been helping me. Who has it been helping me? First Samuel 2 and 2 reads, 
No one is holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Amen. Amen. No one is holy like the Lord. No one. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys. I just started thinking about <laughs> when I was sitting reading these scriptures the other day and how it truly has helped me. It truly has. Um, I encourage you even if you don't start a prayer Bible, I encourage you to just stay close to God and get in the word whenever you're going through anything. Um, Luke 1 and 37. Because he will not fail us and he will deliver you from whatever it is that you're going through. Luke 1 and 37 reads, for the word of God will never fail. Amen. And I just said that before I knew what the scripture was. Because if we, if we believe him, if we believe that God is who he says he is, then we know he'll never fail us. His word will never fail us. He will never fail us. He will always be here. He's always with us. He's always listening. He loves us. Even in the times when we don't love ourselves or when we're not so kind to ourselves and when other people are not so kind to us, God loves us. And, you know, sometimes I tell myself that and I'm like, that's all that matters. If God loves me and I love me, hey, I'm good. <laughs> um, oh, that was Luke. I crossed that off. Okay, James 1 and 17 And I know we all want human love. We want that physical love that we get from another uh, physical human being. I get that. But we can't get so hung up on that part of it. Like, that's all we need. And it's, it's truly not. I think that's a human desire to have a companion, to have someone to love and have, you know, that physical body next to us. But deep down inside in our soul and in our spirit, the one who created us, the one who created us loves us. And so in those moments when we feel like we're not loved, we're not enough, we don't have, you know, anybody to love on us, we can love on ourselves just by diving in this word. We can. And God will definitely comfort us in those moments. I'm telling you, I know from experience. <laughs> I know. Okay. So James 1 and 7. Oops. I messed up my things here. James 1 and 7 reads, such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Wait, no, that's the wrong one. I'm sorry. James 1 and 17. That's for people who don't trust God. Um, 1 and 17. James 1 and 17 reads, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. Amen. Amen. You guys, I'm going to go back over these. Of course I am because I, I always do. Just think about it, you guys. It's impossible for God to lie. He has unfailing love for us. He, his faithfulness endures forever. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. Mm. What more can we ask for? What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's tap this. I'm going to add to these attributes. I know I am. I could not stop at 10. I had to keep going. And I'm like, but the video is going to be too long. But, you know, 
14 isn't too long. Hopefully you guys are still here with me. Um, if you are, drop some praying hands in the comments. <laughs> I do appreciate you all being here. I truly do. Our next scripture is Lamentations 3, 25 through 26. And that reads, The Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just wait. Pray, wait, trust. It is good for us to wait quietly. Don't complain in our waiting. I know I've gone through a waiting season. I'm pretty sure some of you have too. But it's okay. Continue to praise God while you wait. Amen. Okay, let's tab this. We're almost done, you guys. We have one more. This is pretty long, and I don't want to crinkle. I got to figure out a better way to do this so it doesn't crinkle. Okay. Our last scripture for today is Revelations 1 and 8. How fitting. The last scripture comes from the last book in the Bible. So Revelations 1 and 8 reads, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. Amen the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the one who is, who always was, who is still to come. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, you guys, let's try to get this one straight. Where does this go? Like right here. I think I could bring it down a little lower, like right here. Okay, that's good. Amen. This word is blessing me. It is truly blessing me. I pray that it is blessing you guys as well. That crinkled really bad, but I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, yes, I am. I can't use that. <laughs> oh, it's not going to work for me. Okay, let's fix it and let's try to get it straight to where it's not going to crinkle. I don't know how to prevent the crinkle. Oh, I think I know. Okay, I think I figured that out. All right, you guys, we have covered 14 scriptures regarding the attributes of God. And they're all lined up here. It's coming together, you guys. It is coming together nicely. I love it. I thank you all for being here. Father God, I come boldly to your throne of grace, God, just thanking you, oh God, for the souls that have gathered here today, Lord God, to watch this video, to learn about your attributes, oh God, to learn about your character, oh God. We thank you, God, that you've left us with your word, oh God. We thank you that you will never leave us, oh God. We thank you for your unfailing love, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that when we call on you in truth, oh God, that you are here for us, oh God. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, now for the sacrifice that you've made. We thank you, oh God. I can't thank you enough, oh God. I can't thank you enough, oh God, how your word has come to just be a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. And I thank you for it now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 
you guys i think um i may have prayed that scripture backwards but it's okay it is okay i'm human i make mistakes i'm not here to be perfect i am truly here to rely on this word i thank you all for being here with me let me know in the comments how you guys are enjoying the scriptures if you guys have started your own prayer bible um, yeah, I pray that you all will have a great weekend, a great week ahead. Remember to keep praying, keep planning, and make it pretty. Mm -hmm.